you drinking? I'm drinking my Kavita Master Brew Kombucha Pineapple Peach with live probiotics. What you drinking? Your mom. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Directions. You idiots, I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. content. Thanks, I'm Patreon. Follow us for the camera in the bubble case. But bang! Follow us on first YouTube channel. Description below. Two days. Smells like chicken. We're doing a movie review. <laughs> Not just any movie. Not but just any movie. A really old movie. Yeah. Uh, 1960, Mughal e Azam. Uh, the directed, written, and I believe produced by K. Asif. I believe that's correct. That? I believe okay. that is correct. Starring uh, oh, uh, quite a few people, but uh, the main yes. ones are uh, Prithviraj Kapoor, Madhubala, and then the late great Dilip, Dilip Kumar, Kumar, who. He's the reason, obviously, we're doing it now, but we've been meaning, I've been meaning to, I want to get to this during Classic Month, we just didn't get to it, uh, because obviously this is one of the big classics of Indian cinema, and also one of his uh, most famous uh, films as well. Um, so we wanted to, like we said when we did that um, song reaction to him after he passed, we want to actually see his stuff, because he's, he's known as, you know, this legendary actor who... Yeah. That's how we want to honor them, is by, by actually watching their work. So, this is going to be a 100 spin spoiler review. It came out in 1960, which is almost 60 years ago. Actually, over 60 A little years. over 60. It's 61, <laughs> to be exact. But I think it took many, many years, actually. Yeah. From what I, I believe I read, it took uh, almost a decade, I think. To a, little, a little more. I think this project was started and then was held up by partition. Uh, okay, yeah. And then uh, just the original cast, the cast member passed away. So yeah, this was like a lot of big films that finally get finished. They take oftentimes decades yeah. um, to get Long finished. Yeah. Your initial thoughts, please, Rick. Um, so to those of you who suggested we watch this, thank you. Um, <laughs> Because he hated it. I <laughs> to can no stay away from right. it. <laughs> to say that I was uh, that it exceeded my expectations is a transcendent understatement. Mm -hmm. This one for me, and we'll talk about a lot of things. It won't surprise me if we're here a long time. But this is not only my favorite classic we've seen. This is one of my favorite films of all time. It's on my list of favorite films of all time. I think this film is as good as important. As, and I'm going to reference things here. When we talk about, in American cinema, the films that are like the top of the list changed cinema forever. Gone with the Wind. Exactly. Yeah, Gone with the Wind, The Ten Commandments by Cecil B. DeMille. Yeah. I think this film is like that, and I'll tell you this too. The disclaimer at the beginning of the film that said the original intent was to make this in color, and that was the reason for the colorization. This is not only the best colorization of a black and white film I've ever seen, but it changed my mind about whether or not black and white should be colorized. Yeah, this one, we'll get into that. This so, one definitely, I believe. Freaking absolutely spectacular. Um, I agree. I think this is my favorite classic we've seen. Right on. In terms of the everything, in terms everything. of the film, the acting, everything like that. Um, there might be some I'm like, more partial to in terms of I could probably watch that a right more. like Padosan immediately comes to mind that's so much fun well, but it Padosan, doesn't you got Cholet a New York bar Anthony for me those in terms of cl right classics that I could watch all the time sure and I could watch this if it's on I'm definitely watching it a hundred percent but in terms of that but in terms of that it's like in terms of how cinematic it is in terms of how my, great the acting my, is my. this film is almost flawless yep uh Agreed. in terms of especially when it came out yeah uh, I, I was watching it I, I haven't felt like it was doing, the last time I felt this sense of hold this together, don't screw it up, was when we were watching Header. Mm, yeah. And it was so good halfway through. I'm like, please, please. This is so delicate, so fragile. You're doing so great. Please end as well as you started. And I felt that way. About, and it, it did. Yeah. Uh, I just, I can't, I can't say enough. It genuinely is 
one of my favorite films I've ever seen. I, yeah. I was just floored at how good it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was really impressive because obviously it's a, it's a long film. It's three hours ten, I believe. Uh, and I wanted it to go longer. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those, especially it's a long film, but older. Yeah. Which is even more difficult mm -hmm. to keep your attention mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, and it did. It, it was, sure did. It was extremely captivating. Yeah. Everyone. So let's just start. Let's start with the man himself. Yeah. Uh, the the late great Dilip Kumar. I want to see everything he's ever done. I do because too. Because because a lot of times you can get overhyped with an actor sometimes, and uh, especially because people in India love their stars. Right. Absolutely. And so you don't know if it's like he's a star. We love him because he's a star. Correct. Or if he's a th thespian. Right. Um, or both. Um, but sometimes they don't live up to what you've heard about them and we've heard that like he is he brought basically method acting right at the time Correct. to indian cinema and right i 100 believe that i got my i don't i'm not i do like old films but i don't love all old films because of the, how the acting style used to be right I, it bothers me so right. my two favorite old actors are marlon brando and james dean right uh, because of what they transitioned because into realism what they did right. to the industry right hundred percent that's what I got from him yeah is that level of intensity but not nothing over the top it's no all very natural and most of the cast was like that all yeah, most of the cast agreed. was very very narrow with a few exceptions um so hats off to um uh, K As K Asif, uh for his screenplay oh, and his, his directing and keeping everybody extremely extremely natural but he brought so much to his character mm -hmm. uh and it, it makes me very very excited that this this man lived up to what i had heard about like this is like people amitak bachchan looked up to right nawaz looked up to right people like the, of those ilks looked up to as he is the greatest in their opinion yeah and i see um, it yeah and i could totally see it. i don't know Abs i absolutely see it uh he and i i can't imagine like so I, I, this is another one that Indrani watched with me. Oh, did you seen it before? Yeah. Oh, she's got it. She owns it. Yeah. I imagine it's, most Indians have seen yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, she has it on DVD and I can't imagine what this was like on a big screen, mm -hmm. especially the colorization. So let's, before we jump to those things, as far as the acting is concerned for him, I absolutely saw what everybody talks about. I absolutely saw the... Uh, Brando-esque believability. Mm -hmm. I also saw in the totality of this film, like you don't have uh, the modern day Devdas. You don't have yeah. Padmavat or Baji Ramastani. I see what all of these creators of those films were inspired by. Joda because, Akbar. Yes, because yeah. they got it from here. Yeah. And there were some moments where I was simultaneously just transitioning a little bit to tech i was simultaneously flabbergasted by the cinematography mm -hmm. and also the colorization there were some moments where i'm looking at all of the ornate things literally okay, you would have lost if it wasn't thousands colorized. and thousands and thousands that we would have lost and they did such it's the best colorization i've ever seen absolutely incredible yeah and uh, him i want to see so much more of him yeah i want to uh, see everything he's done because like i said I, I only got three films from james dean uh <laughs> which makes me very sad i know uh, <laughs> i love him so much always have obviously he was way before my time but uh the, in terms of old actors that's it's those are kind of look up to and he's he hit the mark almost immediately on screen. I was Instantly. Like, There's something different about There's how, something what, different what about he's exactly. doing. Yep. Uh, so I loved him. Please, please recommend more of more. his stuff. Yep. Uh, because I guarantee next Classic Month we'll get to even more of his and even before that. Um, I want to talk about her. Yes. One of the most gorgeous people <laughs> I've ever <laughs> seen, ever seen in your screen. life. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. And we've seen her in videos, dance, dance yeah. numbers and all the kind of stuff. But seeing her in the totality, I almost... Um, I, I always forget her name, but she she struck me as a Nargis, or Mother India. Um, oh yeah, uh, exactly. She reminded me a lot of her, but in terms of acting and her beauty, absolutely. And I I agree. And Johnny said to me at one point, she said, "Don't you think had she been an American actress, she would have gone down in history as one of the greatest beauties of the silver oh, screen?" Oh, hundred percent, without question. I also loved. There were times, I don't know how they did it. But there were so many times, particularly for her character, where it was directed in such a way where it was overdramatic, the, mm -hmm. the pre-method kind of acting. Yeah. 
but she was really grounded. Yeah. So she could do, like there's one moment where she's in the dungeon and she's just been thrown in and the way that she's laying, it's modeling. She's laying yeah. like that, the lights on her and she's looking back. And if anyone else were doing it, it would look cheesy, but because she's believable and the way it was framed, there's a shot of her in the chains and her face is framed by the chains during one of the songs. Yeah. And I, I just, I, could you, her face on a big screen? This, uh, this cinematographer had an easy job when she <laughs> was on screen. <laughs> For both of them. Yeah. I mean, some of the most beautiful shots are when they're just together and he's going to lean in to kiss and she just slowly turns her face away being shy. And I'm sorry it's I didn't like... bring a feather that I could have. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they brought the so, feather out because they had, there were two feathers. Yeah. So the first one, I was like, ooh, they brought a feather out. Some sensual Kinky. feather play. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> The yeah, she was absolutely. I, and I read. I also I understand. She had a heart condition that actually caused her to faint while she was filming. Sometimes. Really. Yeah. So I don't know if That's they she fainted like five times in the. Yeah, I wonder if one of those times actually yeah. happened on on Maybe. set. Maybe. Uh, but the amount of emotion, and I also saw, in the way they interacted with each other, it reminded me a lot of. Uh, I, I, they they had to have been inspired by it, but their interactions and the way they loved each other and the way that there was stillness and the way it was written reminded me of Shahid and Dapika's interactions in Padmavat, mm -hmm. especially when they first meet each other. And it's so ethereal. Do you and think so that's what overworld. Sanjay was inspired by? Obviously, I know had Sanjay was been. inspired by this film. Had to have been because there were so many shots that were. Now that you've I've seen both of them, yeah, almost. You can tell what Sanjay was going for. Yeah. In, in a lot of Padmavat and Vajirama Stani. The mirror shots. Yeah. Oh, there's one shot where Salim is coming around. It's, it's toward the end when he's got the feather thing and he looks in the mirror and he sees in the reflection, in frame, all of the... It's just yeah. mind-boggling. Joda Akbar as well. You could definitely tell. I yes. Mean, I, I don't know if like the... the I believe he's a transgender um, who is her handmaid in Joda's. Yeah, uh, I saw one in this in the very beginning, so I didn't know if that character was inspired by this character. Well, they seemed to look pretty similar. And Joda you know, Joda Akbar is, yeah. is the mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. I said it's kind of like the sequel to yeah. Joda Akbar. Um, but yeah, so I, you saw a lot of that. I think the. the oh, sorry, we'll get back to the acting in just a second. I think the fight scene at the end was actually better than Joda Akbar did, which Agreed. was. Um, uh, you know we love Joda Akbar, but that was our big gripe. Is obviously the the the, the fight scenes weren't great. The, it was Cecil B. DeMille. I'm looking and I'm thinking, the number of people, the number of costumes, and it's all practical. The number of props. Yeah, this is all real, and uh, the staging, and even the back and forth with them, the the dad and the son with their swords, just as good as anything of the day, if not better than yeah. anything of the day. And I want to talk about the original Kapoor, uh, Mr. Uh, Prithviraj, forgive Prithviraj? us if that's who I, it's pronounced. I believe he's like the, the, the original of the Ranbir clan. I don't know that for sure. It wouldn't surprise me. It makes sense. I don't know. But, but I, I believe this is our first thing of him, unless I've, I've been wrong a thousand times. Uh, <laughs> but with confidence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... He, he did really, really well. He, oh, he definitely brought that old school acting style mm -hmm. of, of but that grandeur, especially with the voice, what they did to that the incredible voice. The, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, the, the dynamic between him and Dilip uh, was was great. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, th I thought they, their uh, chemistry in terms of father-son chemistry and the way it was written I thought was really really great he has great screen presence yes um, and he was, still wasn't over the top which is uh, how a lot of I think there was only just a few actors that I that really did the old school old school uh, his wife was one of them who yeah. did like whenever she was talking she was talking like this yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, it was almost the almost this yes yeah um and, but there was very little of that yeah in this which is for 1960 an indian in cinema indian even cinema. even hollywood cinema correct is incredible because it, that's that was not the style of of the day um and well the, that was the style of the but the, the what dillip did and what uh, most of this film was very subdued um realism was not the style. And so to bring that is is incredible. And he did a great job of, of making you angry with him 
Uh, the, 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 emperor. The, the emperor making you angry with him for his legalism, but also understanding he's trying to do it on principle yeah. and the, the struggle that he has. And uh, he, it could have been easily just one dimensional yeah. and he didn't make him one dimensional and the vacillation he has, which was a credit to the screenwriting as well. I, I, I think the <laughs> subtitles did it justice. Great subtitles, but you, you can, obviously it's probably not going to be as good as the right. original, of course. Right, but this was a combination of poetry and profundity. Mm -hmm. I repeatedly, there were so many battles, like when he's talking to his wife, mm -hmm. and he's going to go fight, and she's, you know, he's making her choose between husband and son. There were so many tit-for-tats. I, I was constantly going, ooh, she said that, oh, yeah, he said that. Wow, oh, she replied with that. It was like heavyweight punches because of great, these actors must have just been drooling over this script. Because, mm -hmm. and it never lagged. There were never points where I'm sitting going, okay, let's get back to the story or what. Everything about the film kept me engaged for three hours and, and it, I, I didn't want it to end. It was a, for a three hour film, it's a fairly simple story. Very simple story. Guy falls in love with a slave girl. Dad doesn't like it. Right. That's that's the There's whole the story. <laughs> that's the whole and it, story. And but it, it, it does not lag. I wonder, I'd love to talk to Ranveer, and I wonder if this was in his mind in Baji Ramastani when he's defiant against his family because he wants to be with her, and he's supposed to be with Priyanka's character, and they're like, you can't do that. Do you realize what you're doing as the future heir of the kingdom, and you're going to marry this girl who's beneath us and she's not even of our faith and, mm -hmm. and he's making these decisions that are like love is love and you can't stop the love I wonder could, it had to have influenced him because I can't imagine oh yeah because he didn't grow up watching this yes well he de probably definitely grew up I think all Indians of course grew up watching this yeah but obviously it was a big inspiration for Sanjay yeah uh this film for sure because I, I read in the comments and I, I read up as well that is, and it was clear, it was obvious, this Jorda Akbar, any big epic, I feel, you kind of have to take inspiration it's from It's so this. wonderful. Um, okay, so favorite moments. What are, what are some of your favorite moments? Because I have a couple. Do you have any favorite moments that stand out that were uh, hallmark moments for the film for you? Uh, well, all the songs were incredible. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to think about for specific non-song moments. Uh, well, one can be a song moment. Because like, for example, my one of my favorite moments in it are there's two and they're both song connected the first one and i one that isn't song connected i just mentioned which is the husband and the, the, the emperor and the wife talking but the moment when salim is going to be executed mm -hmm. and he makes a speech and they all say long live the prince and he walks up to the top and then the sculptor comes and starts singing the song about yeah. long live love mm -hmm. and the emperor comes and you think is he changing his mind? And it looks like he's going to, but he's not. He's gonna pull the trigger, but he's just gonna turn his back so he doesn't have to see it. Mm -hmm. And you're there on that tension, and she starts to run to the scene while the whole time this amazing song of long live love, that no matter what you do, no matter if you kill people, love is more powerful. That from, that got me kind of emotional at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah, all the, the, the end scenes, obviously, when he went up on that big thing and then the big the crowd around mm -hmm. him, yeah. uh, the song during that moment. I love the sculptor. I thought yeah. that uh, M. Kumar, I believe. Is uh, that him? Yeah, yeah, the sculptor, M. Kumar. I don't know if we... He was know. wonderful. He was fantastic. I liked his character a lot. And also the, the one who was protecting her. Uh, the ra uh, the uh, uh, Rajput. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, don't, the is Rajput. That, is that him? Uh, Durjan Singh? Because there was Man Singh, but it was constantly Man Singh. Man Singh was good. I, yeah. But the guy who was protecting her, correct? I who, thought did really, really well. He did really great. You know, he reminded me of that character. What's the film? Oh, we saw it a long time ago. That's what. I'm not, what's the What's the film where they're fighting and he gets his head cut off and he's still fighting? You know what I'm talking about? What? Is it old? It's an older film, and the main this this one guy who's the sidekick. And he is uh, a Rajput. Am I saying that right? Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. I don't know. Uh, he, he's fighting after his head has been chopped off and his arms are still going. Oh, yeah. The shot's from behind and he's between two pillars and they're coming to get him and he's clearly dead. But even with his head cut off, his arms are still... Like Game of Thrones? 
No, it wasn't Game of Thrones. It was an Indian film. Anyway, he was great. Oh, yeah. I yeah. liked him a lot. Yeah, like all the songs were some of the most beautiful cinematic songs uh, I've, I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, I think, two or three, I think? From the film? From the film. Well, I'm very early on, we definitely yeah, saw the, the, the we've the we've, we've seen two. We saw the one where the girls are singing and they're seated yes. together. And then we saw, which is so much better in the film, the one where she comes out to perform for the emperor yeah. and she's just defiant. The yeah. song is basically saying, but I don't think we can't had stop subs then. No, and we didn't have context. Yeah. We were just talking about, man, he looks, this is intense because the emperor is like boiling. Like clearly he's not happy. Well, when you watch it, you realize what she's, she's knows absolutely certain that what she's about to do is gonna, she's gonna die. Yeah. Doing what she's doing, but she doesn't care because she's not gonna lie about the fact that she loves him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, those were all fantastic. Um, also, um, I was gonna say something. Songs? No. Oh. Well, in addition to the songs, the score was ecstatic yes. and beautiful. Incredible, so epic, large, so much of it. Like, I think the totality of the film had underscore. Yeah. I think it was a whole, this full three hours of score in addition, obviously, to the songs. And the other thing, I learned this from a stupid baby that, uh, because Letta is singing in this, mm -hmm. but one of the things I learned was in the same way that we learned that with Zakir Hussein, we should say Yostaji Zakir Hussein, that it's appropriate to call her like Letta D to give her the honor and respect that she's due for what gotcha. she does. Lada D. Yeah, Lada D, uh, which is just... Lada D, Lada D. Exactly. <laughs> they had to call her Lada D. So I hope that is the right thing because we want to give her the respect that she's due. She is, you know how old she, that wonderful woman is? Probably 80 something. She's in her 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. But you obviously, every time I hear her now, I think of Corbin going, there's Lada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lada D. Yeah, see, the synopsis, a 16th century prince falls in love with a court dancer in the battles with his emperor father. Yep, that's, that's it. The, that's the entire... Three thing. hours of that. Look, Everything else is weaved around just which, that simple sentence. Incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's a testament to the writing, the directing, and the actors of, of how well they did, and the cinematography in this thing. I'm so glad it was colorized. Really, uh, and that's so weird to say. And Yeah, because usually, <laughs> usually you always want it how it was intended, but this thing, I feel like you would have lost the grandeur. Absolutely. It, if, if, if it wasn't colorized. Especially since that was his desire. Mm -hmm. I love at the very beginning of the film, and this film did have a full re-release when it was colorized, yeah. that it was his desire to see it in color. And not only did was it incredible to see it in color, um, I've never been so flabbergasted by the quality of colorization and never known a film that probably needed it more yeah. than this film. Anything you didn't like? No. Mm. There's nothing I didn't like about this I just film. wanted it to end faster at a different Oh, point. well, let me ask you this. I think you know when I probably... I know, I... Because it's my understanding through Indrani, because she asked me this question. She said, there's an argument about this, and a lot of Indians feel one way, and a lot of Indians feel another way. A lot of Indians think the movie should have ended with the last brick yep. in the wall. Oh. Yeah, could have. I, I thought that it was a stronger ending with them just taking her out and him on the floor. Well, oh, just to go at, die. At the song. Okay. And you're like, okay, she's And she walks go, to the door and the door closes. Closes. Right. And you know she's going to go get killed. Right. That's where I wanted it to end. Right. It didn't ruin it the way it did, but it's just, you know, I... I prefer just a different... I don't know if that's the actual story or whatever the, well, here, whatever the real story is. Here's why... And it, this isn't just because I love happy endings. Because I do. How, and I do like endings that are ambiguous or even negative. It doesn't bother me. I mean, one of my favorite movies is There Will Be Blood. That thing didn't end happy. <laughs> uh, and the thing about this one is the, the, the movie is about the emperor. Mm -hmm. The movie... It's his name. You know, the name of the movie is about him. Yeah. And... The full lesson, I thought you have to have that moment where the mother of, of Anna, An, Anja, um, what's her name? Uh, I, not just the actress, but her character, uh, Anna Kali. The mother remembers the promise, right? Yeah. And she goes to him and he lies. Yeah. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. And when the ring gets falls on the scale, yeah. and the scale actually goes yeah, tips, up, yeah. right? That 
full lesson for him of, because at the beginning, Salim is completely degrading the whole thing by playing on the scales. It makes it very clear he doesn't believe in the principles his father believes in. But the whole arc for this character is about how do you balance, which is the same for Arthur and Camelot, how do you balance being a ruler who must abide by law and not becoming bound by legalism? And that's why in the end, he tries to figure out a way to maintain law but not be a legalist. And you don't get that if you end it on those two spots. Yeah. But I know the... I just preferred. Yeah. I think it would have been a much stronger ending. I get why they did it. All yeah, you gotta have that lesson. But... I think it would have been an extremely... I was hoping, like, as she was walking and he was just there Credits on the floor. Were going and I was like, this is going to be an awesome ending. <laughs> and then it kept going. And I was like, but oh. that's where, for me, because this is... I've taught this ad nauseum, but in theater class or when I've taught acting classes, I've said, what is what are movies? What's theater? It's storytelling. And stories always have a moral to them. What's the moral to the story? And you can't get the full moral because there's multiple... But when it comes to the Emperor's moral, you need that ending. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, Incredible. obviously, love this film. Incredible. Uh, I'd watch it again and again. Uh, One of the greatest it's, movies ever made. It's a fantastic, fantastic film. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, I hope you're not still here. Um, but yeah. if, you, if you are, just go watch it. Watch if it anyway. If you haven't seen, I feel like most Indians have seen this film. Well, you know what? To me, it's even if you heard this story, but you never saw the film. Because I don't know how many people know the story of Romeo and Juliet and have never seen the play, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You should still see the play. Yeah. Still see a good production of the play. It'll impact you. I can't imagine... I literally can't very imagine... Very Shakespearean, this was. Very Shakespearean. I, if somebody watched this and didn't like it, my takeaway would be then you just don't like movies. You should probably just read books. Because yeah. this is about as good as movie making gets. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us know what the next uh, Dilip Kumar film and the next classic we should be. We want to explore. He only did 68, 68 films uh, of this uh, in his repertoire, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and that's because apparently he was very choosy. Uh, and, and I think his personal life was quite Brando y. Was it? I think it was. Because like, I heard something recently, like within the past week. Uh, because he passed away, there was a quote from Nasiruddin Shah that was kind of critical of him in terms of he didn't really contribute much back to the craft in terms of raising up new people and training people very and was very reclusive. I'm like, dude, it was Brando. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I'm not hey. going to fault him. Hey, yeah. not everybody has to contribute the way that other people do. No. So he was reclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Some Some of us... Don't like people. Uh, <laughs> it's really okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so let us know what the next film of his and the next classic we should watch is down below.